the times. 24 minutes to wait as well. You're listening to 5AA, 1395 AM. Andrew Reimer taking you through to midnight tonight. With 9 in 10 Australians deficient in omega-3, global expert and consultant to the World Health Organization, Stuart Tonk, is calling for an increase in omega-3 intake and greater awareness of the need for balance between omega-3 and omega-6s. Tonk is Australia is in Australia at the, the moment, right throughout this month actually, uh, for the big fat story. Uh, presenting recent research into omega-3 fats and the potential health implications of dietary fat imbalances. Stuart joins me now. I believe he's over in Melbourne, is it? Hello, Stuart. Hello, Andrew. How are you? Thank you for having me on your show. Uh, my pleasure, Stuart, and welcome to our country. And uh, I, I believe you are in Melbourne at the moment, aren't you? I am. I've had a great time. I started in Perth, and then we went to uh, Sydney, and then the Gold Coast, and uh, you know, back down here, and I'm having a wonderful time. That's, that's great to hear. Now, Stuart, when it comes to omega uh, fats, omega fats, we hear a lot, a hell of a lot actually, about the omega 3s, but not so much about the omega 6s. What's the difference and why do we have to know that? Well, they're both essential because we can't live without them and we have to consume them in our food, whether it's dietary supplements or eating fish, which is what I recommend. However, these essential fats have opposing biological functions. Omega 6s produce the largely pro-inflammatory hormone-like compounds, Andrew, and they crowd the omega-3s out of the tissue, which is the issue, meaning if we're all taking a couple of fish oil capsules and we're eating too many omega-6s, we're not going to get the benefit. But how do you know you with the omega-6s, well, like you, you buy your fish oil supplements and it's very clear that you're, you're getting the omega-3s, but how, what, where do we take in that, that omega-6s? Corn oil. Soybean, safflower, sunflower, cottonseed oil. Now, since I've been here, and it's not just here, it's in many parts of the world, mm -hmm. you may have noticed on the menus where they say, we are very concerned about your heart. We're going to replace the butter with safflower oil mm -hmm. because we really care about you. Mm -hmm. This is a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. These omega-6s are the precursors to the compounds that make your blood thick, increase sensitivity to pain. So that's going to keep you in a state not only of a hyperacted uh, appetite, which is the new discovery that they've made, but also the substrate to create these pro-inflammatory hormone-like compounds. So that's what the big fat story is. We need to stop oversimplifying, and we need to really teach mechanism of action. Those omega-6 fats that you're talking about, they're, they're in just about everything now. It's absolutely ubiquitous, and the more we study this, and there are some great scientists from your part of the world, one of the best mm -hmm. of all time is Professor Robert Gibson, who's over at the University of Adelaide. 2012, he just won a Lifetime Achievement Award, they call it the Alex Leaf Award, for the big society that I'm part of, the International Society for the Study of Fatty Acids and Lipids. Mm -hmm. Professor Gibson showed all of us that the more you put these vegetable oils into your diet, the more you eat, it slows the body's ability down to do its job to convert green leafy vegetables into the stuff that makes up the brain. Too much oil is clogging up the system. So how can we avoid those? How can we avoid these, these sort of fats getting into our systems in the first place? What do we need to do? Well, there's a tool. My mentor, Dr. Bill Lands, L-A-N-D-S, put together a website called fastlearners.org, F-A-S-T. It's free. It's not about product. It's all about food. Mm -hmm. And it tells you which foods are high in omega-6s and which foods are high in omega-3. This way, if I can get people to eat more purslane and more seaweed, some flax meal, sardines, anchovies, mm. salmon two, three days a week, and then skip the six and eat the three, then we'll get the benefit that these fats have to offer. Okay. What about, what about fruits and all those vegetables, nuts? You've got, you've got various fats and uh, nutritionist oils in there too, haven't you? Yeah, this is where it gets really tricky because avocado, you know, nature, the universe, God, where you believe, that's where all the omega-6s are in seeds. So let's say that you're not eating out and you're eating a lot of yummy nut butter and mm -hmm. walnuts and avocados. That's where omega-6s are. So unbeknownst to yourself, you could be eating non-GMO granola all the time and walnuts and avocados, and you could still be out of balance with the best intentions. So when I call it the big fat story, that has multiple meanings. 
goodness gracious. Omega-3s, now they, they sound like the good ones, the, the, the fats that we need more of in our diet, but there was a study out a couple of months ago over in the US talking about a link between omega-3 fatty acids and an increased risk of prostate cancer. Yeah, that was a very, very interesting observation. And I think the thing that we need to remember is that that was not an intervention study, meaning they were never studying omega-3. They were studying selenium and vitamin E. Mm -hmm. So our research and education department, our medical advisory team, we analyze all this data as it comes across. And uh, some of the most important scientists in the world really disagree with those findings. So A, it wasn't an intervention study. And then the other thing that's interesting, they were tested once 10 years before the men developed cancer. They had high PSA at the beginning of the trial. They had first degree relatives that had prostate cancer. The men had first degree relatives and they were highly educated. So if you're highly educated, you have high PSA, first degree relatives, you're likely to eat a healthier diet. So we need to not throw the baby out with the bathwater if omega-3 increased prostate cancer for men, mm -hmm. the Japanese would have the highest levels and they have the lowest. And that's because of their diet, their fish diet predominantly. It's a huge part mm -hmm. of it. So we, we, we have to, and the reason that it's worth bringing up, and thank you, is the men that are the most likely to discontinue eating fish or fish oil are the ones that probably need it the most. Okay. That's that's very interesting to uh, to say the least. Now you're you're in Melbourne at the moment. You're you're doing a tour around Australia. Are you coming to Adelaide? Uh, I am not. I very much would like to to come and uh, hopefully get to to visit Professor Gibson if I ever get a chance. Um, but I'm I'm thrilled to be here. I'll tell you, people are very excited about learning even more. Very knowledgeable already. I just spoke at the AMA conference the uh, Australian Integrative Medicine Association, the big annual conference. I was one of the big speakers there, mm -hmm. and it was really met with uh, with rave reviews. Which, which is great. It's a very important issue. It's one that needs to be at the forefront of many, many people's minds in this country, in particular, I, I guess, and being a little bit selfish here, males, because of, uh, you know, talking about just the, the general health. We males in Australia in particular, we let t tend to, we have a tendency to uh, ignore our health and uh, think everything's going to be all right until, in many cases, it's too late. Well, if you think of the things that are out there that we can do, more data than ever on sleeping more, mm -hmm. The emotional component, right? Working on kindness, forgiveness, all the huge influence yeah. on stress levels in the body. But of all of the exoteric things, and I'm not a reductionist, eating more fish, getting more omega-3, skip the six and eat the three. Of the things that are out there, also maybe vitamin D, like David, those are some of the really proven things that even the most conservative allopathic GPs agree with. I'd also encourage people to talk to your health care provider about the omega-3 blood spot test. There are now different types of tests that you can do that are very easy to determine how much omega-3 you actually have in your body so that we're not debating what you're eating as much as what ends up becoming you. That's what's important. What about when it comes to supplements? You talk about food and the focus on eating your sardines, anchovies, your, your fish in particular, to pick up these omega-3s, the good fats. What about your dietary supplements that we find everywhere? They're in supermarkets, chemists, uh, elsewhere. What about those? Are they, are they beneficial to us? Well, there are three FDA-approved, two in the United States and one in Japan. There are three government-approved prescription omega-3 drugs. Most people don't know that. Mm. There are 2,500 randomized control trials. So the caveat of the quality of these things, the European Food Safety Authority recently ruled that said these supplements can be safe as long as the oxidative stability is guaranteed. So regardless of the mm. brand, bite into the capsule. Bite into the capsule. If it tastes fishy, keep asking the people that promote and sell these things if there's something that has very little fishy taste or no fishy taste. And then there are places you can search on the web that do independent testing so you know they're safe. They're a great thing to do if you're not eating enough fish, if you're eating too many omega-6s, if you're not eating a plate of seaweed all the time, the supplements are reasonable and sound. Mm -hmm. What about, you talk about the tablets or the, the capsules, what about the actual fluid? Also, same thing. Uh, grandma's cod liver oil has now become big time mainstream <laughs> preventative mm -hmm. medicine. Mm -hmm. And so there's really something about that when she would give us a tablespoon of that stuff every single day. 
So again, you really want to check with the manufacturers. You want to make sure that it it exceeds the international standards. There are many, many groups now that are monitoring the quality of these things. And, and many of the things that you can get in the finer health food stores and in the pharmacies all really are very, very high quality. Stuart, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us tonight and educating us a little bit more in relation to those two fats and uh, omega-3s and omega-6s. Stay away from omega-6s. Get more omega-3s into your diet in a, a more natural way, I guess, is the message that you're trying to get out there in particular. Enjoy Melbourne. The coffee over there is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> That's what I've heard. I'll have fun telling the big fat story, and thank you so much for having me on. And we ha hope to have you in Adelaide before too long as well, Stuart. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you. Uh -huh. Stuart, Stuart Tonk there, who, uh, very, well, he's an authority on evidence-based dietary supplements, certified natural health professional. He's had over 25 years' experience in the field of nutritional medicine, former consultant to the World Health Organization. He's a current advisor to integrative physicians worldwide, having traveled the world as an educator and trainer for over 15 years. It is 13 minutes to 8, Adelaide's 5AA, 1395 AM. Andrew Reimer taking you through to midnight tonight. Around about 12 minutes' time, we're going to be joined by Dr. Kate Howe and uh, taking your calls as well, of course, on the topic of asthma and asthma awareness here on Adelaide's 5AA. Brothers. Oh, oh.